Chicago at Texas White Sox woke up two back at KC and the Royals lost top three Robbie Alomar called out on strikes in the first and called out in the third. Yeah, he doesn't like it now he's throwing out by Phil Cuzzy and well at least Alomar didn't go Hirsch back on it. We take a look at it using the sports center strike zone and it appears that the pitch is on the heart of the plate when it crosses the plate. Lewis had 10 K's got bigger three times. Rafael Palmero 519 career homers not 520 but he does get the double off Esteban Loaiza had four ribs on the night the Rangers they win it. Boston Seattle just wild card AL East and West division implications on here. We'll pick it up in the bottom six nothing decided tied 4 four when things get interesting for Mike Timlin and the Sox runner in first one out Dan Wilson grounds to second Todd Walker the throw pulling Noma off the bag. Mark McLemore is safe. Omar has been argued to no avail. First and second, one out. Next batter, Sparky the Sun Devil, Willie Bloomquist. Grounded to short, nasty hop, and Nomar gets the worst of it. Todd Walker tries in vain. Bloomquist is safe. Bases are now chucked. Look at it again. They say anybody can catch the good hops. It's the bad ones are tough, and that's just tough for Nomar. He would stay in the game, however. So the next batter, Etro, base is loaded. Bill Miller in foul territory has got it and lets it go. Grady Little's going to go. I think we may regret giving this guy another swing. And so each row taking advantage of the new life. And there it goes. His second career grand slam. He's now 15 for 28 with the bases loaded. That's a 536 average. Eight for Mariners. Top eight still eight four. Red Sox have a man on second. Armando Benitez walks David Ortiz. And then. He walks Trot Nixon on four pitches to load the bases. Todd Walker, he walks him. Sox down 8-5, and Mets fans are still cringing just, you know, kind of blatantly. <laughs> Shigatosi Hasegawa comes on. He gets Gabe Kapler to strike out. That's two, and then Kevin Millar air ball as well. Hasegawa gets out of the jam, and the Mariners hang on to win this thing by a count of 10-5. Royals four up on the Twins. Three critical games for Minnesota to make up the ground or perhaps pack it in. Jimmy Gobble on the hill going for his third win. Scoreless in the first. Luis Rivas bunting and look at Joe Randick gobble that up. Big stretch by Mendy Lopez to get him one more time. Every pitcher gets better with defense and Randa making his guy great. Jump top third. Two zip twins. Two on two outs. Tori Hunter. That's way deep. Three run homer is 22nd and the visitors are up five to nothing. That's more than enough for Kenny Rogers, the veteran. He's Wiley. Aaron Guile, done. Raul Banez swinging. The gambler was dealing. Mike Sweeney got no shot. And then Brent Main, he too goes the strikeout route. Rogers, two hits and eight innings pitched. One earned run, seven Ks. Terrific stuff. Then Luis Rivas hits it where Randa cannot go and get it. The home run, he's now got 16 career home runs. Nine are off Royals pitchers. That one in particular off Paul Abbott. Twins go on to win it. 9-2, 17 hits, and close the gap to three games. A's away from coming off the DL because of a fractured right hand. Might have even started Sunday against the Phillies until he fell down some stairs at the team hotel. And yes, the Hyatt Regency in Philadelphia does have elevators. Moore suffered a severely sprained ankle and will be out another two or three weeks. On the plus side, Albert Pujols had his suspension appeal postponed because of Thursday's blackout and is still playing. Two-game ban for July 12th dust-up still pending. Pujols looking to extend his hitting streak to 29 games. Look no further than the first inning when he delivers again. That's off Vicente Padilla. 29 it is. Although the cards got nothing out of it. Bottom first, already down 3 0. Todd Pratt hits one to the left. Jim Tome thinks he's Carl Lewis. He is going. And he is safe. Throw look there in time. He got in. See how they made it for love. Great slide just out of the reach of Mike Matheny. The Bills put a five total in the first. Top four still 5 0. Pool hole second at bat. That two is down into the gap. Two for two at that point. 12th double during his 29-game run. Top five, Jimmy Edmonds. Well, he's not going to have to stop at second. He can come all the way home off Padilla. His 30th of the year, a two-run jack makes it 5-4. Larry Boa, I can't watch. Look at Edmonds' reaction as he hits it. A little look at the Phillies dugout. A little how do you do. Bottom six, still 5-4. Jim Tome. All right, Pedro Bourbon. Outside curveball again with Deuce on the outside corner strike two. But don't go to the well three times. Ask any comic. Matheny steps out. Oh, boy, he hung it inside. And Tome, you hang it, he'll bang it. 
Two-run shot is 31st, seven for Phils, and Tony La Russa is not happy. Not a fan of our bones. A little shout out there to GMO Jockey. Top seven, seven for Phils. Pool holes to right. Bobby Abreu didn't play that all that great. He's gonna rattle around the right field corner. Pool holes his first triple during the streak. Top nine. How about the cycle? Oh! No, not judging by that reaction. Didn't get all of it. Look, can of corn out there. Pools three for five. Cards lose it seven four. Now the pool hole slider we've all been waiting for. During his 29 game hit streak, pool holes batting 388. Amazingly increasing his batting average just six points. Longest streak in Cardinal history since Ken Boyer went 29 straight in 59. Last Redbird to record a 30-game hit streak, Stan Musial 1950, and of course, like Pools, Stan the Man could hit 300 with a popsicle stick. Houston at Cincinnati, the Astros take the yellow jersey to Central with the win. Reds with the work cut out for them, beat Arizona Thursday to end a 16-game losing streak against the Snake. The Strohs have beat them 10 times in a row. Top seven tie game, Danny Graves giving up a homer to the opposing pitcher, former Red Ron Valone's first career homer. It's 3-2, and Valone would turn that lead over to the bullpen, and that looks like a good bet. Opponents batting just a buck 82 against Octavio Dotel, but with the bases loaded and two outs, Ray Olmedo rips a two-run double, and the Reds take a 4-3 lead. Dotel would go two-thirds, give up four hits and four runs, all earned. Two more coming on this single by Jason LaRue. Reds up 7-4 with the five spot in the seventh. Top eight, Stroh's coming back. Two on, two out, that pitch ain't coming back. Chris Reitzma giving it up to Craig Biggio, his 11th, ties this game at seven, but the Astros just two and six in extra inning games this season, and when this one goes to the 10, but you know the Reds are gonna walk off with it. Adam Dunn off Brad Lidge, 9-7 since he, 27 of the Reds' 54 wins this season have come in their final at bat. Los Angeles and Chicago. You know the Blues will heal you. Dusty Baker hoping to turn Wrigley into the house of Blues. Got a nice beat on the main stage. Co-headliners. Turn it on. Sammy Sosa, Mark Pryor. Quite a two-man band. Sosa was rocking in Sunday's win against L.A. Went three for four with two homers. Bottom one, one on. Sosa's opening number. Laying down a rip and ripping that Maceo Keita pitch to left center. Kenny Lofton running around the stage trying to find home base. Paulo Duca can't handle the feedback. Lofton scores. Sammy went three for four with two RBI. Top seven. Pryor beat the Dodgers on Sunday. Friday, he got some help from Stevie Ray Vaughn's former band. Double trouble. Adrian Beltre loses his backstage pass. Top eight, two on two outs. Jeremy Benitz, he's not into the blues. He's a, into swing music. Inning over. Top nine, two outs, still 2 1. Ron Coomer, he likes to listen and look. Pryor gets a second straight complete game victory over the Dodgers. 2 1. Rock on. Florida Marlins began the night one half game behind Philly for the NL wildcard lead. We showed you Philly winning. Let's show you a comparison between the, these two teams. Well, they're going to be close in payroll. 49 million to 47.9 million, but the Marlins have been money since old Jack took over, and the Padres just playing out the string. Bottom two, two nothing. Oliver Perez facing Juan Pierre. The ads are seven and three in Perez's last ten starts, and Mark Kotze making the nice catch. Brad Penny facing Perez, and well, Perez is not happy about striking out. Plus, it's his 22nd birthday, so he wanted to do something special. Facing Mike Lowell, he's not going to get his cake and eat it, too, because Lowell eats that pitch. 32nd of the season, drove in three for a career-high 101 RBIs. Pudge Rodriguez, 37 RBI in his last 42 games, adds to that. Well, the Marlins lay a Hamilton on him, 10-0 with no change. The backs and Braves, statistical fun now. Randy Johnson, 3-4 and four in the year and 3-4 and four lifetime against Atlanta. That means the Braves are one of four teams in the majors. Randy Johnson has a losing record against the others. Orioles, Yanks, Cards. First time he's faced the Choppers in the regular season since 2001, and Vinny Castilla hacking there. That's out his 20th 4 2 Braves. Bottom five, Marcus Jobs would like a little sum of that, and he gets plenty of it. His 15th 6 2 unit going to allow nine hits and seven runs and five innings pitched means he's got to allow one more and that one courtesy of Andrew Jones his 30th fifth 30 homer season in the bigs fourth straight Johnson roughed up Braves win it 10 4 Giants bust to Montreal because of the blackout in New York no Barry Bonds no fans you love the Canadian baseball
There's your man, LeVon Hernandez, tied in the NL lead with complete games of five. He's got a 12 and seven record. Now, Agardo Alfonso in the third single. That'd be the last sniff they'd get. LeGrand Chance with two outs goes down, and then Pedro Feliz looking at the nasty hook. Four in a row set down. Fifth inning, two away. Jeffrey Hammonds goes down looking as well. Seven in a row. Sixth frame, Galarraga one more time. This time gets bat on it, but glove. Ten in a row. Seventh inning, two outs, Feliz. Oh, swinging at the hook. Thirteen in a row. Hammonds. Jose Macias will hang out with that one. Sixteen in a row, and then in the ninth, two out, dial up Uncle Charlie again. Galarraga, 19 in a row, Hernandez. Complete game, 13-7. Spos win it, 4-1. He's lost, he's 3-1. and one. Here's how he fits in with the big three, and as you can see, hey, quite well. Plug him in there. Hudson, Harden, Mulder, Zito. Zito finally got a win here this past week. We go to the top third, A's up 1-0. Nobody out, Harden facing Eric Hinsky, and that's one for the Harden family scrapbook because... It's the first home run Harden's allowed as a major leader. Two run shot for Hinsky is ninth. Blue Jays up 2 1. Later in the third, two on. Harden hits Frank Catalanato on the right foot. Take your base, loads him up. Rick Peterson, pitching coach, comes out, calm him down, have some words. Then Tom Wilson walks. Maybe should have told him something else. Vernon Walls has scored. Jays up 3 1. Top four Harden, Hinsky again, and Hinsky again. Monster shot, two-run homer, second of the night. Harden did well, except for that whole Hinsky thing. Four innings pitch, gave up six hundred run, and Jays win it by a count of eight to five. Yanks and Orioles. Aaron Boone hitting a buck twenty-five, no homers, one rib in thirteen games with the Yanks, and then that average down to one eighteen after an zero for three night, going to the ninth, three-two game. Thinks he's got himself a two-run double that'll put his team ahead, but we're going to call it foul. And as you see, it is. No chalk flying up. Well, Boone's not pleased about that, but that's all right. He gets another hack. And this time, it's even better. It's the other way. He's got a three-run homer to go ahead. But that's called foul. Well, well, now we've had enough. Willie Randolph arguing with umpire Jeff Nelson. Look at it again. And the ball... It's hooking, and it appears to hook inside the foul pole, which makes it a fair ball. Oh, yeah. Well, the ump's going to discuss this. because you know, between them, they got four eyes. They overrule it and award the home run to Boone. His first is a Yankee. Well, now, Mike Hargrove has to come out and yell at Tim Sheeta, and then he gets ejected. None of this is going to change the fact that the Yankees win at 6-4 with Fifth, CC Sabathia has Toby Hall down 0-2, and so that's, that's a good time to waste one. There you go, one and two, and then the next pitch, we go two and two, but plate umpire Dale Scott decides we're going to load it up, full count, let's speed up the game, that'll help him. So uh, what happens here, Sabathia throws ball three, and Hall's just going to take his base. I mean, notice that Sabathia got shorted one. Luckily, he didn't score. We point this out, though, just to show how America test scores and math are lousy. Bottom nine, <laughs> Josh Bard, single, only run of the game. Indians win it one up, and Sabathia, his first career shutout. And doesn't this just speak volumes about the state of Brewer and Pirate Baseball? Mascot races are the big draw. Well, bring it on, home skillet. Randall Simon, he's made nice with Milwaukee's choicest meats. And then in the bottom of the second, Matt Kinney. Oh, strikes him out. Bottom fifth, we finally get to what we want to see. The pierogies and the sausages. Director of PR for the Bucks, Rick Orienza. Handicapping like Hank Goldberg. you got to give the sausages you know, the nod on this because, you know, they're, uh, you know, they've, they've been around for a generation, but the pierogies are young, you know, they, they really don't know any better. They don't know they're not supposed to win this thing tonight. So, you know, they run their race. I think they've got a real good shot. <laughs> and they're off. Pierogies and sausages. Well, look at the pierogies. They got legs. I mean, look at the size of these other costumes they want, and they got the golden skillet. But there'll be a rematch in Milwaukee after that. Then Kenny hits Simon. Yeah, that hurts in the worst way. Simon would stay in the game. One for two, a run scored. Matt Stairs, former beer maker in the seventh of Mike DeJohnny. Three run. Tater is 15th. Pirates going to win it. 6-3. Lights on at Shea, Rockies, and Mets. Manhattan still shrouded in darkness, but a voice comes from the abyss providing comfort. The uh, Mets game at Shea Stadium is going to be played tonight. Uh, it's been a long time since the Mets were on this kind of a uh, streak. Two in a row. Let's hope they can make it three. 
Oh, yeah, Mr. Mayer's working the chuckle hut. Bottom six, Mets up one nothing. Jose Reyes adding to it. Off Darren Oliver, his second. Mets up 2 nothing. By the way, at 9.01 p.m., the blackout officially lifted. Home plate up, Justin Clem gets Jason Phillips broken back to the head. A freak accident. Clem would walk away with a cut. Got some stitches. Ouch. The Mets end up walking away with a win. 5 nothing.